Hello, this is John Gok, and this is going to be a video about Winston. I'm going to focus on uh, taking the initiative as Winston and attacking as a Winston. I mean, uh, entering the fight and starting the fight as a Winston. So, I'm going to go through all the mistakes that uh, newer Winstons might make and what I try to look out for as a Winston player myself. So without further ado, let's go into the first scenario. Um, and the first, the first thing you have to look out for, for Winston, as when you play with Winston, is that you have to look for your team comp. Winston is a very, very situational champion, which means that generally you can be played in many maps, but it is uh, the ease of which you play a Winston. Uh, how easy it is to play a Winston in that map depends on your composition, and it depends on your enemy's composition as well. So when you're playing this kind of like uh, first. Mm, this kind of uh, King's Row, Hollywood, this kind of thing where you're taking the first point. Um, it's it's good to play a dive comp, but you need to see that your team is a dive comp. So what happens if, let's say, we don't have a Genji and we have a 76? You can still play a Winston, but you need to be where uh, you need to be careful of jumping in straight off the bat. Because if you just jump in, like you go straight to the door of King's Row and you just jump in into King's Row or into Hollywood, uh, they can punish you very easily. The enemy will start to punish you, and your your teammates might not be able to follow up because uh, your teammates uh, are not like uh, you're, you're not playing like a Genji or Tracer. So if you're playing a Soldier 76 and Hanzo, and they start shooting when you're trying to create space for them, what if like the enemy right hand raises the shield? It is very hard for them to follow up when you are when you jump into the midst of the enemy. The the, the it's very hard for your teammates to follow up and put out push out damage while they are hitting you. Uh, while they're hitting you as a Winston, so. The best kind of dive comp is, let's say, you go for like, I don't know, a Diva, Winston, Zaya, uh, Tracer, Genji, where your whole team composition are people with very, very high mobility and are able to just enter the fray, just bypass the, the right hat shield and just start to brawl. And that that's, that, that's a team comp where Winston starts to shine. But when you are faced off with a slightly uh, less dive divish team comp, uh, let's, let's see what I did here. I'm going to show you what I did in the f first point attack for King's Row. So here's uh, here's me at the door, the doorway. So actually, this was actually a mistake on my part because the, if the roll was good, I would have got hook. So this is kind of like a, I'm gonna show the the jump which I did, and I'm gonna tell you that uh, I'm gonna tell you that this is a mistake. Many Winston they do stuff like this. They just jump in straight away, really nearly without thinking of where to jump, without thinking of the enemy team composition, and then they they die, and then the, then they'll start to complain why didn't my team follow up? But the thing is, you're not making it easy for your team to follow up. You're making it very hard for your team to follow up. So right here, I jump, and I actually landed a bubble right here, and I scoot straight into the bubble, so Rohawk couldn't hook, couldn't hook me. But this was actually a bad jump. Why? Like just now, I said it was a bad jump, right? Why did I say it was a bad jump? It was a bad jump because Rohawk could hook me from the start. Like when I was at the gate, just before I jump, there was a couple of seconds, two or three seconds, where the Rohawk could just hook me from the start. So and and I'm jumping straight into the midst of the enemy. Uh, it's not okay. This is not like a atrocious jump, but this is not a good jump either. What what am I trying to do right here? I'm trying to create space for my team, but uh, it's not really working out. And I might, in fact, I might die. And if I die, it's, like I said, I'm giving 500 HP to my the enemy. The, that will build their outcharge really really fast. This is a very um low high risk low reward kind of jump. So this is not the kind of jump you want to look for as a Winston. Throughout your your play, uh, throughout your games as a Winston, there are sometimes you have to jump this kind of jumps because let's say someone is low on health, uh, but then again if that, that guy is low on health it's no longer that high a uh, risk low reward. It will be like a high risk high reward kind of thing. So you're looking for high risk high reward jumps or you're looking for low risk low reward jumps or you're looking for low risk high reward jumps. You don't want to go for like this kind of jumps where you might die and you're not going to kill anyone for it. Uh, unless your team is really coordinated and your team is a dive comp, but let's say that you're in solo queue, so that's not going to happen. So I'm going to show you the jump that you should be doing, at, you should be looking at as a Winston. So this is my second try. I, I managed to back off safely without dying, and this is my second try into King's Row. And I'm going to show you the second jump which I did, and this is the jump you should be trying for uh, in Hollywood uh, in in King's Row. There are different spots like this. I see the solution so so six and I jump out. Let's say there's no seventy six here. You can still jump here. You can still jump to this high vantage point in Hollywood. Uh, you can jump to the second floor, the one on the left side. You can jump on the second floor on the right side, the one where you know you're on attack. And then there's 
the this these buildings on the left and the right, you can jump either on the left or on the right building. What you want to do is just you want to take high ground and you split this attack as a Winston into two portions. So the first part you jump into this area and you're now creating space. You're not taking this area. This area was not yours previously, but now it's yours because you made it yours. Right now I pushed the 76 from the high ground into a place where I could push him into my teammates, as you can see. Uh, he's right into my teammates. And it also allows me to uh, have easy access to the enemy team because right now I can choose to jump here. I can choose to go continue going for the 76. And I when I go down and place my shield, I can place my shield in a very, very um, inconvenient spot for the enemy. So let's continue this clip and see what I did next. So I'm waiting for my shield to come out. Uh, none of my teammates, you, see, you can see why am I not joining my teammates in the fight. So why didn't I just jump down straight away? Because I'm waiting for my shield, my bubble shield to be up. So what scenarios? There, there is a scenario in which I, I will jump down straight away after going for the 76. That scenario is when my team starts, to, if my team had already started to fight. So let's say just now, the 76 jumps down and then the, the enemy, instead of backing off, they decide to push up. In this case, I wouldn't wait for my bubble shield because the fight already started. If they push up and then the, 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 the fight starts to clash around here, I'll just jump down and try to do as much damage as possible while, while trying to be the tank for my team, you know, in the midst of my enemy uh, hitting them. But right now, I see my team is uh, backing away. They're trying to stabilize their push and the enemy team is also making sure their line is here. So we already succeed. We already won half the battle of King's Row. We have taken the statue. So taking the statue is the first half of the attack for King's Row. And by taking the and Hollywood has that as well. The first half of the, uh, to succeed in Hollywood attack, you have to first take the, the high ground. Uh, I mean, I know you don't always 100% need to take the high ground, but doing it will really, really help you out in, uh, in the subsequent pushes. So right now we take the statue and now the line has been set here. Just now the line was set at the door, but being able to push up the 76, being able to force the 76 down, being able to force the enemy back, being able to take this area, uh, has uh, make sure that the enemy has to retreat and now we have the space up to here. So right now you'll see that my next jump, I only jump down when my, I know my bubble shield is up. So I'm not just jumping in really nearly and I'm not even using my jump because I don't need to jump. I, I can just drop down. So why am I not using my jump? Because right now if I drop down, and I, I shield, I can use my jump to es I can stay as long as possible and use my jump to escape. If I use my jump to enter the fight, yes, I might be able to go for Anna, maybe I can go for someone more dangerous, put myself in a slightly better position. But if I do stuff like that, I'm not I will die within the enemy. Like the chance of me dying in, in the midst of the enemy is really, really high. So you see here that uh, I go, but uh, this this fight is sort of already lost already because we lost two players. So you will see that um I use the jump to get out. So what, what happened if I just now had jumped in into the fight and then right killed my teammates at the same time, you will notice that I would die and then this, this HP, this will go to the enemy uh, enemy's ultimate charge. So as a Winston, uh, the Winston is hard to play because you are always putting yourself in danger to help the team, to, to help the team in the best way possible, you have to put yourself in danger. And when you put yourself in danger, many, many Winstons in lower rank, they can't get out or they don't get out fast enough. So they jump in, they die and they go like, why aren't you guys following up? And they think it's, uh, they, they might be doing their job, but it's it's like a zero sum game. You are, let's say you're helping your team, uh, you're helping your team 50%, but by dying, you're not helping, uh, you're, you're kind of like bringing your team down by 40%. In, in, all in all, you're just helping your team 10%. Right now, you're, you want to maximize the amount of help you're giving to your enemy team while uh, trying to survive yourself. So you're, you're, you're trying to inconvenience the enemy team as much as possible while not dying. So I'm going to show you the next scenario. I'm going to show you how we finally managed to push it. Okay, so uh, this is, I'm going to show you another, in this push that we did, the next push, the, the, I think this was the final push. So I talked about how you don't want to just jump into the enemy and then just try to win the game. Uh, sometimes you have to look out for, uh, you have to make incremental uh, area control. So you want to control parts of the area at one time. So you want to uh, take, you want to, uh, you want to take advantage of the enemy and you want to try to uh, see these areas in positioning enemy make. You want to take as much area as possible and you have to do it slowly. So what do I mean? Because um, right now you see, um, okay, so right now I jump for this area, the high ground. So I couldn't reach this area. I couldn't reach this area because uh, the enemy pushed up all the way here. So I couldn't reach where the 76 was standing. I want to reach where the 76 was standing, but I can't. So this is my angle. This this area is my angle. Controlling this area will force the enemy team to move back, like just now what you saw happen. But right now, enemy team pushed up because we, our team trickled a little bit. We got picked one or two members of the one of two members of the team got picked off. So we aren't able to 
uh, the enemy team is able to take up a lot of a lot of space. But this also means that it's easy to pick apart their defense because the Raha is going to take some time to go back. So now the enemy team is a little bit scattered. See, the Rohawk is not up here. Uh, they have to pull back to deal with me. Then the, the support is somewhere around here. So they are kind of scattered. It, it's, they are not super scattered, but they are sort of slightly scattered. So you see right now that I... I'm, I'm kind of low, I dropped the bubble, 76 now has to focus on me. So I've drawn the enemy's attention onto me. Uh, I've drawn the rogue's attention on me, I've drawn the uh, soldier 76 attention onto me. So now Reinhardt is without support. So every single thing you do, whether you survive, whether you take up space as a Winston, you will aid your team. But the, the most important thing is you need to survive when you have to survive. You, you don't just want to throw your life away, your life is very precious. Sometimes you do have to take risks and those risks leads to you dying, but you don't want to take like stupid risks where it leads to nothing. So now I see the Zaya took uh, out a Reinhardt and my, my health is uh, 250. Generally I'll look for heals, that's why you saw I was heading down that way and I was thinking, hmm, I need some heals, I, just, I can't just fight at 250 HP. But after the Zaya took out one man, this is, this is like, um, this is the signal, it's telling me, Winston, you should fight right now, you need to do, like you need to fight right now. Like just now I talked about how when they start brawling, I would have I would have jumped down if they started to fight. But they didn't, so I didn't jump down. It, by doing that, I survived. But right now we got one pick, so now it's a 6 versus 5. Which means that if we take any fight in the next 10-20 seconds, we have an advantage. So you see that I jump for the 76. There's no way I can kill the 76 with this amount of HP, but I'm going to suppress the 76 and help out as much as I can. That doesn't always mean killing someone. So you see, I, I, I hit the 76. Then I, I, I backed away from the 76. So you see, I didn't chase the 76. So what did this do? Uh, this makes sure the 76 retreated down the AD way. And by retreating down the AD way, um, my teammate can push up uh, some more. So the enemy team has to push up, uh, push back because uh, they don't have their DPS anymore. So what if the 76 stay and kill me? Because the 76 can kill me. I, I won't be able to kill the 76 if he puts down his biotic field. Diva can fly up and help me because he, the 76 will be overextending. But uh, by moving back, by moving back when the 76 is moving back, that's the correct option for him. But that still allows our team to push up and this comes from this pick right here. So uh, now we have all this space and now you, you can see that this is slightly different. My teammate has already pushed up uh, to this area. So this is already slightly different from the previous push and the right hand has, no one has got a pick from the enemy team. I Now I can jump down and I can try to kill the Lucio. So now we, this, we have a second pick right now. And we are just going to try to snowball this. We want to fight as soon and as hard as possible, getting the tempo. Uh, I jump, then I, <coughs> I edit the trajectory of my jump so I could go for the 76. And now I'm chasing the Rohawk. So now that Anna is trying to heal the, the Rohawk, I'm just hitting as many people as possible. It's really easy for me to hit everyone. And the Reaper is trying to go for the people at the back. By focusing the Reaper, uh, he's forced, he will just die. And we win the, we win the first point. So I'm going to try to see whether I have, I think I have one more example for, to show you guys. Um, so now we are at the final point and I didn't, uh, there is actually a, a period of time which I didn't show because we just uh, use momentum and push them all the way to this area in which they won one or two fights and now I'm going to show you the last final fight with a bonus clip <laughs> of me playing Tracer. But anyway, um, so what I want to talk about is how, uh, to show you guys how I play this last point using the concepts the, that I talked about in the in the first half of this clip. So like I said, I'm, I'm taking high ground. And the uh, enemy Winston actually finally learned his lesson. I'm going to show you. Because right now I'm taking this high ground for free. No one's contesting this area. Generally, someone should be contesting this area. So if you play in like Master, Grandmaster game, you play in Screams. This area is not going to be free. They're going to charge you your life for it. So a diva might be fly might f have flew up here. If I have fought against a battle team. If, if the enemy team was better. Or in my uh, Screams against my uh, other teams in, in my team. A uh, diva might have flew up here. What else? Um, Winston could have jumped up here. Or, or someone could have just come up here to put pressure, or maybe a 76 could have like stood here or here. They'll just be putting pressure on me, so they're not going to give me this high ground for free. But because uh, uh, this is lower rank, this is low diamonds, I'm taking this area for free. Okay, so right now the enemy Winston finally wise up, he jumps up uh, to, to try to contest this, this, this area, this area with me, which is the correct choice. This, this Winston is playing right. He did a little bit late, but no harm done because the fight hasn't really started yet. He's trying to force me off. His mistake, his one single mistake is that he bubble shield. He didn't need to bubble shield right now because I, I'm just a Winston. So there's, there's no way this would have helped him in any way. My lightning, my lightning gun is going to hit him a, a, anyway. So this means that the next fight, uh, you'll see I jump down soon because the next fight, I'm going to have my bubble shield and he's not gonna have his own bubble
double shield. So instead of fighting a Winston, which is really, it's not going to do anything for me, you'll see that I, I jump down here, and I drop my bubble shield right on the whole enemy team as my Zaya Graviton. So, um, my, uh, with the enemy with Winston bubble shield might have helped the, his, uh, his, team against the, his team against our Zaya, but he, like I said, he used it very badly against me. Then, and I died to the I died to the, the the Reaper. I could have actually jumped away. My reaction was slow, so this was a mechanical uh, mistake on my part. And being able to bubble the uh, the team, enable the Graviton to be a really good Graviton, and I'll Diva killed three two three people with it. With me, uh, the only person dying, me la. I was the only guy that died. And my enemy, uh, my teammates altered, and we managed to more or less clear the enemy team. So this is the last final clip and I was playing Tracer because uh, it was 60 seconds left. I didn't want to play Winston, I already had no more outs and stuff. So I started going for the Reaper. Uh, this is just <laughs> I'm not going to teach you guys how to play a Tracer because I, I'm not that good at Tracer. I'm just playing Tracer because so I can get back to the point as fast as possible. Sometimes I play Tracer but I don't always play Tracer. I only play to feel for the team. So thanks for watching my, my clip and I hope you guys learned something from uh, my mistakes and the things I thought I did well and I hope I wish you guys good luck for the game so wait wait, wait. The, ne this, the next part is the chase I think I, I was quite cool I was quite proud of this I have to I gotta work for my aim as a tracer man. I stuck it to the ground in front of the payload and I got a triple kill and we finally won this fight so thank you this is Jungkook and thank you for watching